and also she has been featured in one of the top 1% of the brightest people in the world. Welcome to the show, Ayana. Thank you. Uh, how did you spend your time in Siliguri? Uh, well, often on the weekend we go out as a family um, on uh, different small outings, mm -hmm. uh, such as I went to Duas and I've seen many rivers like the Tista River. And we go out in the morning in the car and we spend the whole day there and come back in the evening. And I really enjoy it because um, I like India a lot. And now first tell me, uh, how did you get into writing? Uh, well, from a very young age, um, because I didn't really know English when I first came to England, mm -hmm. um, I, I've been a quick learner, so I learned English pretty quickly. And uh, from then on, I found uh, a love of creative writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, from quite a young age, I used to write stories and poems a lot. Like every day, um, sometimes I used to sit and write a story. My mum used to give me a topic and I used to just sit and write about it. Um, and then my mum's friend, she suggested that why don't you put these into some good use um, and send them to competitions or anything. And we hadn't known about that before. So my mum uh, was really enthusiastic about it. So she decided to uh, go onto the internet mm -hmm. and uh, searched up like, competitions to enter. So from then on, uh, it progressed, and I've, since then I've been winning prizes. So, Ayana, you are the winner of the uh, Wicked Young Writers Award 2017, and your so story was selected from the 1,300 entries from across the UK. So can you tell me about the story, like, you know, what inspired you to write this story, and what is it all about? So mainly this story was taken from my own life story. Uh, so it was about a young girl called Indigo. And she had recently moved to the UK uh, from India at the age of three. Mm -hmm. And it showed how she adapted and adjusted to her surroundings because she was constantly being uprooted from wherever she lived uh, due to her father's job. Yeah, it was um, very nerve-wracking when I was sitting down in the Apollo Victoria Theatre because um, I was sitting literally on the edge of my seat <laughs> and I was waiting until they announced who the winner was. Um, obviously, I was a little bit hopeful inside, so when they announced my name, I went a bit teary-eyed because mm -hmm. I was so surprised and I didn't think I'd win it. But when they announced uh, my name, I was overjoyed. Overjoyed. All right. Okay. So, uh, so do you also plan to write in any of the Indian languages? Well, um, as of now, the only Indian language I do know is Bengali. But as a person, I uh, really, really enjoy learning new languages because in school uh, we learn French and Latin, and we're going to learn Spanish in uh, year eight. So I really enjoy languages. Um, but I also really want to learn Hindi because, of course, it's the Indian national language. And maybe a bit of Nepali because uh, my grandparents and my mom can speak it. Really? And I want to learn. So have you picked up any of the any Nepali sentence? Yeah. Can you speak? My grandpa taught me this sentence. So what is it? Can you share uh, with our viewers? It says... And then, Malay <laughs> Okay, thank you. And um, so you have won several awards, like the um, campaign for the nuclear disarmament, which obviously you won it for the second time, and the FSHAM awards. And like there are a list of awards that you have uh, been called, uh, you have received, right? So what does these accolades mean to you? Well, of course, um, whenever I win an award, I feel very proud and, of course, humbled at the same time. Uh, and I think it's wonderful that writing, which is my natural talent, it can go out and be recognized by people. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's good that um, I'm receiving uh, recognition and people are actually uh, giving me a small prize or a trophy for it. Mm -hmm. And I feel very happy because of that. Um, but also, 
uh, I don't write just for the awards. I write because I enjoy writing, but I often enter competitions because it's good to see um, where I stand amongst everyone else, and it's, it also feels nice to receive something. Um, but if I only wrote for these accolades, then I'd have stopped ages ago. Um, so it's definitely just not it's just not because just of the prizes. Right. Okay. So now let's talk about the style. Uh, first of all, let me ask you, who are your favorite writers? Well, among authors, I really enjoy um, a writer called Anthony Horowitz. Uh, he writes spy thrillers, and I particularly enjoy his Alex Ryder series. Um, and I also enjoy Mallory Blackman. Uh, she's written the Noughts and Crosses trilogy, which is a realistic dystopia. And I enjoy uh, that type of genre of books and uh, also Agatha Christie. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like her style. Uh, uh, my favorite book by her is called Elephants Can Remember. And also among some um, Indian, I've read some Indian books such as, um, it was called 14 Stories That Inspired Satyajit Ray. And it had some stories that were written by different people uh, such as Rabindranath Tagore and the, the stories were extremely vivid in their descriptions, and I really liked reading them. Um, one of them, which is called uh, Monihara, um, it even scared me so much that I couldn't sleep at night because I kept thinking about it. So it was really gripping, and I enjoyed the plot of um, all the stories. So it seems that you are a voracious reader. <laughs> yeah, in I really enjoy reading. In a month, how many books do you read? <laughs> Well, uh, I guess about maybe five, six. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more about Ayana and her works. परिणाम आज को दिन में हमी ने भोग न पर्ने दिन को गंती सुरू भैस Thank you. 
प्रकाश में लगे Welcome back to the show. We are speaking to Ayana Mandal from the UK. So Ayana, do you consider yourself as a born writer? Uh, yes. Well, since I was born, I've really enjoyed writing, and as I'm avid, as I'm an avid reader, that um, certainly helps uh, because I often write stories and little poems, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, this often this really helps me because um, every day I try and write something. I have a little notebook in which I try and write a line every day, right. and that's just to um, boost my imagination. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day I try and do something uh, that's a little bit creative. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed uh, writing stories and poems from the beginning. So I think I was um, uh, born with a, like a literary flair. So I think I'd like to continue writing okay. in the future. Right, okay. So basically, when I was going through some of your stories and your poetry, uh, your genre is more of a nature, right? But you, you have not shied away from writing serious sub on serious subjects as well. And uh, recently you wrote um, a, a, a story on the Anne Frank um, Reborn, yes. which is totally based on the Holocaust. So isn't it, you know, isn't it very serious for you, for a 12-year-old girl, to think so deep? Well, I think, um, as a person, I think I'm a bit more mature than most uh, other people of my age. And I enjoy writing about uh, more deep, uh, heartfelt subjects mm -hmm. because I think um, as a reader, it would appeal to me more. So naturally, as a writer, I write um, more maturely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just um, personally, I prefer to write about something that has a lot of feeling and emotion in it. Uh, and I think um, people who read my stories will enjoy that too. So I like to combine what I like reading and within what I write too. Right. So when you talk, I mean, when we are talking about serious subjects, you know, from where do you get the ideas? Uh, well, Is from the Holocaust, yeah. uh, I used to go to a Jewish school um, in primary school, mm. and often in they, the UK. In the UK, yeah. yeah. Um, and often they told us about. Um, events that happened in the Holocaust. And so I grew up um, knowing all those things. And uh, my other um, poem, The Day the Bomb Fell, mm -hmm. it was about the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And of course, I had to do some research. I had to read a bit about the Japanese life and how the bombings occurred. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I had to do a little bit of research, research. to get an insight. Mm -hmm. um, so not all of it is from my own memory. You have tested the Hall of Fame at a very, very early age. And most of your neighbours, they even call you the young writers. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, the young writer. So how do you feel? You know, how do you feel about it? Do you feel very special? Or do you feel, you know, there's a lot to do? I don't really feel any different from any other child because inside I am a child in the end. And um, although I like writing as a hobby, that doesn't stop me from doing anything uh, any other normal child would do. And um, as you said, most children are seen out playing, uh, things like that. As a person, I generally would uh, prefer writing any day. So. I think it just makes up me as a character, so it doesn't really make me feel any, um, it makes me feel a bit special, but not very different to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the kids, you know, children of this age, they are seen, more, most of them, they are seen carrying tabs, you know, I've, um, smartphones, and uh, they are into computer games and things. So are you attracted to such technologies? 
Well, definitely. <laughs> Seeing as um, I'm part of this generation, mm. um, I, of course, have a, like, a phone and a tablet. And I enjoy um, using them. But, um, of course, I don't think they should be used too much because um, it, can, uh, it can mar your creativity and it can also uh, stop your concentration. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing is uh, to use it um, in limited times and also only to use it for a good purpose. So for my writing, I might research something on my phone or the tablet um, on the internet. Or sometimes I do write on my phone because I find it easier to erase mistakes rather than writing on paper. But at the same time, um, if you gave me a book and you asked me, um, would you prefer to read it on a Kindle or uh, the paperback version, I definitely say um, in real life a book because I like the feel of paper as well. And I think we should not lose paper and books, um, but we should also embrace the new technology mm -hmm. um, as well as keep the old. You are also into voluntary work. You have been volunteering for some organizations in Silicon. Can you please tell something about that? Uh, yes. Um, just yesterday, I went to the Kanchenjunga uh, Stadium and uh, there was a little room and there were a couple of children, about 15 and 16. Um, most of them were older than me and there were some my age. And it was um, a little bit of an exchange. So I told them about how the education is in England and how the teaching works and how school is and school life. And they told me a bit about how Indian school system is. So it was just exchanging each other's lives and I found it really interesting because as we are school children, um, this is the most relevant thing uh, we have at this point of time. And it's one thing that we both share. Mm -hmm. uh, we all share even though we live in different countries. So it was really interesting uh, to see how their school is and it gave me an insight into India because um, I come to India almost every year on holiday, right. but I never really have an experience of how school there is, so it was nice to hear. Nice to hear about all, all their experiences yeah. as well and sharing your experiences, mm. isn't it? Okay, so uh, here we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about Ayana's feet to one of the brightest person in the world. बसनुहोस् अनि बचाउनुहोस् आफ्नो पास्थलोला 
An apple a day keeps the doctor away. But apples may not be abundant always. Or enough. But good health, health is wealth. It's the most common saying. Doctor, HIV AIDS is going viral in India. From fitness to medication and nutrition to yoga. Is there any cure to it or precaution is the only way out? The higher the BMI, the greater the risk of... From inquisition to information, everything related to your health. Because we care. Health World, only on AVN TV. Welcome back to the show. We are speaking to a 12-year-old Ayana Mandal, a published writer from the UK. Apart from being a writer, Ayana is also featured in top 1% of the brightest person in the world uh, after giving, after clearing the Mensa IQ test in 2018. So Ayana, can you please tell me about your experiences of, uh, of this feat as well? Uh, well, of course, it feels, um, I feel quite proud to have achieved this, um, but immediately, um, when I've achieved um, this high score, immediately I'm compared to such geniuses like Einstein, Einstein and Stephen Hawking. Yeah. But um, to be honest, I don't think I deserve to be compared to these type of people um, because they're of... Um, they're, they're a lot, uh, they've done much more um, than me uh, because obviously they've been to such um, good universities and discovered uh, lots of theories, um, whereas I've just done an exam and I, I don't think I deserve uh, to be compared. Um, but at the same time, I do feel quite proud, but I don't think that I should be. And to be honest, it feels a bit embarrassing sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So were you nervous when you gave your exam? I mean, when you sat for this test? Well, to be honest, I wasn't. Yeah. Because um, I went inside the exam hall completely stress-free. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really um, think about what would happen after the exam or what would this mean. Because usually when I give an exam, it's usually giving an entry into a school or something big like that. But at that point of time, it didn't seem very big to me. Um, it was only after I finished the exam and I'd found out my IQ that I was... Um, I was told of how prestigious it was, mm -hmm. so I was pleasantly surprised after that. But I went to the example completely stress-free. I was not nervous mm -hmm. for anything. So you were the only child on, in that room to give this test, isn't it? Yeah, actually, um, when I went inside the hall, um, my dad was taking me inside um, because uh, the under-18s need to be um, with someone else. With someone else, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I was seeing everyone else was at least like 40 or 50 or like proper adults mm -hmm. and I didn't know it would be like that. I thought um, there'd be other children like me uh, so I was a bit surprised but still I wasn't nervous by um, all the adults around me. Mm -hmm. I just took it in my stride and I, I did the exam with my full focus. So Ayana, did you prepare for this test? This may sound like a cliche, but I put in absolutely zero hours for this uh, examination. Um, I was planning to do some preparation uh, because my mum had bought some Mensa books that had some previous questions and puzzles in them. Um, and I was planning to flip through them, but um, of course with school and other ex extracurricular activities, um, I didn't in the end manage to put in any preparation. So... Um, of course, I went to the hall without uh, any preparation at all. But I think because uh, in 2016, I had done the 11 plus exam mm -hmm. to enter a grammar school. And in, in that exam, I had to prepare a lot for um, verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, maths and English. Uh, I prepared for at least one, two years uh, for that exam. So I think that definitely that helped, helped me a lot. Okay. 
and I think that was the main reason um, how I could achieve this goal. Is it just reasoning? Uh, the questions, as people um, normally have this stereotype that they're maths questions, but there are zero maths questions. The exam is mainly based on um, the Cattle 3B test that has uh, mainly verbal reasoning questions. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have a strength in English, so I think that's why I did that particular paper well. But there was also uh, non-verbal reasoning, and um, that's about it. Okay. So... Finally, before we wind up uh, this program, my question to you is every creative person has an inspiration or gets an inspiration to kickstart a work. Who or what is your inspiration? Of course, um, all the writers and uh, other poets that I read, that I've mentioned, of course, they inspire me a lot because my style of writing comes from them. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, definitely, my main driving force um, is definitely my mum and my dad uh, because my mum, she's constantly, she's very enthusiastic about my writing. Um, but she's definitely my worst critique, but also... Um, my biggest fan at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I win a competition or get a prize, she'll be the one who's the happiest for me. And uh, when I'm about to send something, mm -hmm. um, she'll definitely give me small suggestions, like how can I improve this particular part or anything. And um, also my dad, uh, my dad definitely, he's a big inspiration because he takes me to all these um, competitions and events. And also my dad writes um, quite a bit. Uh, often uh, as a family, we enjoy traveling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, when we come back from our um, travels, like mm -hmm. in the hotel, my dad will persevere. Uh, he'll sit with his laptop and he will write something at the end of the day about what we've done. And um, me and my mum will sleep, but he'll be up <laughs> all night writing something. So in that way, uh, he's a big inspiration too. So do you have any sort of uh, disagreement with your parents? Definitely. In terms of um, writing? Uh, you know? Yeah, me and my mom, we often have uh, fights mm -hmm. about, like, uh, we have, like, small arguments. and But in the end of the day, we um, uh, make up and yeah. it, so it all goes yeah. fine again. Okay. So what is your message to the young readers? So I think... Uh, the main thing is to keep your eyes open because, uh, as I said, my mum's friend was the one who told me about these competitions and before that I didn't know. So you should always look for your talent and see if you can use that talent in a good way mm -hmm. uh, to help others and uh, to also give you something. So maybe if you're, say, good at um, art... You can enter an art competition and maybe you can get a prize for that. So you should always look around for opportunities and try to excel. And that will make you better as a person, but you'll also help the people around you. And I think that's really important. Right. Thank you so much, Ayana, for, your, you. for coming to our show. And I wish you every luck for your future. Thank endeavor. you.